Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a little bit of a vlog style video and it's my first time doing this so this is going to be interesting to uh, do together. But anyways, welcome to my new setup and it's not perfect yet but it's getting there and hopefully soon I'll have some sort of like craft room tour but for now there's still a lot of things that I need to get done like the back is going to be all pictures, so I have a lot of pictures to frame and put up. But today we are going to be talking about my next upcoming sewing project. So I figured it would be fun to start going along my process on making each costume or project that I work on. And I have a list that I made out yesterday of the things that I need to get at Joann's. So I'm going to go stop at Joann's today to see what they have. Hopefully they have everything I need, but I will show you uh, what I have written out so far so you can get an idea of this new stuff I'm trying to do to get a little more organized. So that way I'm not going to Joann's about 50 times because I forgot something. So this is what I have so far. So this is the pattern that I'm going to be doing next and it is a cosplay by McCall's and it's the hitched uh, sort of steampunk skirt. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to be doing this pretty close to the style itself uh, with the one color main fabric and then a black trim and black um, accessories. But I will be using this army sort of green uh, fabric that I have because I have a ton of it and I need to use it so I can what is it slash the stash so so I'm going to be doing the main fabric in that green and then everything else will be black I already have all my d rings uh, for it it was asking for 24 so I needed quite a lot of these and then I also picked up the ribbon I believe it's for these right here so I picked up some ribbon. I didn't know how much I needed at the time. I was at Walmart, so I figured I'd just grab some there. But this is the 7 8 inch wide. And I think I only needed a yard. So I have a little more than I needed, but you can always use black ribbon because black is something I'm always using. But I will need to go and get a black lining fabric. So I'm just going to line it in black. And then it's asking for black fabric for the contrasting ruffles and the waistband. So I'm going to go and just get a bunch of black fabric for this one so I can finally get started on sewing it and getting it prepped out. And then I will go ahead and start drawing out my pattern pieces that I need onto my tissue paper. So that is what I'm doing today. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step which is going to Joann's. Also while I'm there, I will be picking up for my Beetlejuice dress, which is the other cosplay by McCall's Nightfell Herbalist. So I will be getting a bunch of things today, not just for this. All right, so I have gotten back from Joann's and I picked up all of the black lining fabric and ruffle fabric that I need. And this is also gonna go for a another project afterwards, so that's why there is so much. But I did find a zipper that's the exact same green as my fabric, which was pretty cool. Because I wasn't sure I was gonna find it. So yeah, that's pretty perfect. So I have the zipper. So now I can start tracing out all of my pattern pieces onto my tissue paper, medical paper, it's technically, but um, it's essentially tissue paper. And that way my pattern will be saved forever in its original condition. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so going to the pattern, I just look and I'll see what pieces that I will need. And then I usually write it down now. So I'm trying to keep organized and know what I'm cutting out beforehand. So I wrote down all the pieces that I'm going to need. So I'm not going to need everything on this list since I am doing view C, which is a longer skirt. So it's going to use most of the pieces on this one. So I have them all written down. So I'm just going to go through and start tracing out each pattern piece that I need. 
So on this particular paper, it was just the top one. I just grabbed the first section and I'm gonna need number two. So I'm gonna do number two first. So I'm gonna grab my medical paper or if you have tissue paper, same thing, but medical paper, you can get this nice big roll of it. And so I try to conserve as much as I can. So I'm doing a size 16. It might be a little small on me, but I'm trying to work off that extra-ness that I have. So hopefully I'll fit into it soon if I do not already. But I'm just going to go as close to what I need as possible. Add my weight so we're not rolling around. And then basically I'm just going to trace out the size that I need. So finding number 16, it is this second line. So I'm gonna follow this. best as I can and thankfully since it's tissue paper I can see through pretty well sometimes it's a little hard to see and of course then I'll lift up and go back and forth but for the most part I can see it straight lines I try to use a ruler so I get that more accurate fast trace and then I'll just keep going And then once I got my whole piece traced out, then I'll lift up and I'll look for all my notches and dots that I'm going to need to mark later on. So I'll mark those on my pattern piece. And right here. Okay, and then once I have those, then I'll go back and write things like, this one says center back on fold. So this is the center back on this piece. And then last, I will mark what this pattern piece is. So it is number two and it's the back. So I'll just put a number two back. And then it says to cut one on fold for the fabric and the lining cut one on fold. So I will write that. So fabric. Cut one on fold, lining, cut one on fold. And that's basically what I'm gonna do with every pattern piece that I need to cut out for this pattern. So for this piece, which is number 13, since it's a little wider than my paper that I'm tracing, I'm just gonna cut out a little piece since I have some extra uh, paper on this piece. I'm just going to cut off some and then add it on here and then tape it on. Just like so. And I usually try to go where my line is, so that's where I'm cutting, so that, that way it's not all weird. Um, when I cut through my pattern, that I don't have like extra whatever opening, I have the tape there to secure the, the edge so it's not flapping around. And then from here, I'll just trace it out like usual. Okay, so it is day two. And last night I did finish tracing out all my pattern pieces. So this is what I have now. So I've got all of them traced out. So this does take a little bit of time, but for me, it's worth it just because I like to keep my patterns how they were manufactured basically because my weight does fluctuate. So sometimes I'm a little smaller, sometimes a little bigger, and I don't want to, I don't want to compromise my pattern because they're so expensive and they do go discontinued. So I want to make sure I keep them for as long as I can. Um, as nice as I can. So that's why I like to do this. And as you can see, that's all I did was just trace them out. And then if they had any markings, I would mark. 
and there's also like grain lines all marked. So I make sure everything that was on the piece is on the ones that I trace out. So that way there's no confusion when going with the pattern directions. So at this point, I'm just going to start putting them onto my fabric and cutting out each piece so it's ready to put together. Hey guys, so today is now day four and I have finally finished cutting out all the pieces today. It's 10 p.m. now, but I did finish a couple hours ago. So these are all the pieces that I have cut out. So I got all my lining and my pieces and I got all the contrasting ruffles and everything like that. So this is ready to go. I don't know. I'm planning to start it tomorrow. So we shall see if I'm able to do that. We have a lot going on tomorrow. My girl's first dentist appointments are tomorrow. Um, so that's gonna be eventful. And then my oldest has uh, distance learning after that. So hopefully after that, I can kind of maybe start. I have to figure out how to set up my camera. This isn't how it used to be. It used to be on a different, my other tripod and it didn't have all this, but I was trying to get some footage of me cutting for this video, which I'm sure you've already seen. So I'm gonna move it over here and I don't know, somehow figure out how to position it in this little space I have now. Cause before I had a window seal behind this. So that helped give me more room to put the tripod um, I guess with enough room to stand and be able to look over my cutting mat. So I will have to play with it tomorrow. So I might not start tomorrow, but we'll see. But if I do, I do want to paint my nails. So right now this is my printer and silhouette and my, uh, laminator. Here's my old man. He's never up here. He's not allowed up here um, because of the carpet and he's very old. So his bladder is no good. <laughs> but for today, my husband said to bring him up for a few minutes because he felt bad that he was always downstairs by himself. So he's kind of just wondering. He can't really see. He can't really hear. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he just wanders, but he's up here right now with me. Um, but right now I have all my nail polishes here. I always like to do my nail polishes. Um, or I'm sorry, I like to do my nails uh, for a video. So that way, because you only see my hands. So I feel like they're the one thing that should look nice. I got all my stuff there. But for now they're in here. Because the rack that I had for them, my girls broke. So. Uh, let's go figure. So anyways, I have all my, my polishes in here that I use. I have a couple more, but I don't really use them. But as you can see, they're all the same brand. They are the, uh, the KL Polish by Kathleen Lights on YouTube. She's one of the older, bigger makeup gurus. But this company or brand she had is, in, is discontinued. And she has a new brand called, um, oh, I don't remember, but she's got a bunch of new um, polishes with that brand. I think I have one of them here, if I can find it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> here we go. It's called Lights L Lacquer. That's right. So I have one of the bundles of 12 polishes or how many is it? I think it's six polishes. Um, but I'm missing quite a few of her new ones. I think I only have the first one. Um, but I love her nail polishes. She's, the colors are really nice. They're like always my kinds of colors. The paddle is like a nice big rounded paddle and then they're fast drying and they last a long time. Um, so I love her polishes. So I always have, oh, <laughs> you Okay. There's a lid there. Um, yeah, so I always, um, this is what I pick from basically for my videos. So I'm not sure what I'm going. Oh, there's my other one. <laughs> you can come in. Come on, silly dog. Come on. 
I'm sure you guys recognize my corgi. She's usually up here. But anyways, I don't know what color I'm deciding to go with right now. I haven't painted my nails in forever. I did get a manicure. Manicure? Yeah, manicure two weeks ago. And it was okay. I had a nice dark green on it. And so I'm thinking I'll go with something different. It was kind of like this kind of a green, but no, not even. It was like a dark forest green. So I think I'll go with something completely different this time around. Um, maybe a pink. Oh, this purple is nice. Mozart. Hmm. I love this color too. The, I've worn this quite a few times and I really like it. I'll put this to the side as a maybe. And there's a nude Lumiere. I don't know. Ooh, that's a super bright pink. Ooh, this nice dark red. Havana Nights. She's got a lipstick in this color. So I think it's down to these two. And as much as I would love to do this, I've done this quite a bit. I think I'm going to go with this burnt, like... Sienna terracotta red called Cubana. I'm sure I've worn it before, but I'm just really attracted to this color right now. So I'm going to go ahead and paint my nails this color and then I will call it a night and hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow. So I'm sewing along and I'm doing one of the first ruffles and I'm doing my gathering stitches like so. And guess what happened? I ran out of thread in my bobbin, but I just barely made it. Literally, just barely. Do you see that? Oh, that's the best. I'm so glad it didn't cut off beforehand and then I would have to restitch it again and de-thread all the thread I already had. But I can definitely make this work with just that little bit there. Ah, the joys of sewing. So it is now the end of the first day I'm actually assembling this skirt. So I got this piece that I got to finish sewing. I'll probably sew this on later on tonight. And then I do have the other front piece of this and this is ready to go. And then I do have the front portion with the what is it the harness part so that's good to go but it is five o'clock now so I'm gonna go make some dinner and I will get back to this tomorrow but I definitely made some progress on it so it's going I think uh, I'm really hoping another day maybe it'll probably be two days most likely but definitely another day for sure that I can get most of this done and then I will have to figure out what I'm going to do with this because this is my background but I have no artwork yet so when I go to film my full length uh, me wearing it I'll have to see to I have to see how I can spruce it up but I will call this a day okay so hopefully this is the last day that I'm working on this project I've finished most of it now. It's over here hanging. I'm just finishing the yoke or the waist section, the waistband section. It's not really waistband, but it's like a, a giant portion of it. But anyways, uh, I'm finishing that up now. And then hopefully I can put this little vlog together for you. Vlog, 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 vlog together for you guys and have this up while I edit my tutorial video. So as of right now, I just finished the zipper part, which I was dreading because I hate putting zippers in, but they're such a great closure. I don't know. So this one um, wasn't too bad so far. I don't know, once we get to the lining, we'll see how that goes where I have to 
layer it on top of each other. But I'm going to start again by sewing up this end here together and continue from there. So I am almost done on my instructions. I'm about here. This is what I'm about to do. So I got a few more here and then just these two on the back. So I am almost there. I guess my last little dilemma is just that my nail polish is starting to chip. Can you see that? It's all not focusing on that. Do we not want to focus? There we go. It's starting to chip. And being that this is the finger that I point out where to sew, I don't know if it's going to be too noticeable or what. I really don't want to repaint my nails because I'm almost done with this project. And if I repaint them, I have to wait at least an hour. Otherwise, they just get all yucky and smudged. Um, so I think I'm going to try and get away with it. And hopefully you will not see it on the video. And I'll try and keep it at a distance. Um, yeah, we'll try and keep it at a distance so maybe you won't notice it. But I guess we'll make it work as best as we can. So I'm finishing up sewing this skirt. I'm like literally like two steps away from finishing this skirt and I'm halfway through sewing. Well, it turns out I actually ran out of thread on this and I normally don't use these. As you can see, it, it goes right up here in my sewing machine and then I close my lid. So, but I don't, but I don't normally use these. I usually use um, the bigger ones and I can get a lot more life out of them because there's so much more thread. Anyway, so I was using this one because I found it in my thread storage and I was like, well, I might as well just get rid of it. Anyways, it ran out, which is like crazy, right? It's very rare that I run out of thread because I'm using these big things. And as much as it happens with the black and the white, it doesn't happen often. So I run out, it snags, I get in here to replace the thread and then I realized when I take it out that it's super dirty because I realized I haven't cleaned it since before we moved. I think the last project I did was my Queen of Hearts project, my Queen of Hearts uh, dress and so it had a lot of red thread in here and everything so I like get in here and I'm like cleaning everything and I give a little oil because it needed some a little bit of oil since you should do that regularly and for some reason, this little thing is what moves the little feet here that pushes your thread through. Let's see if you can see it. See how it's pushing up and down? But that pushes your fabric through and this got stuck. And so for the last like 20 minutes now, I've been trying to get it unstuck and I get it unstuck. I don't know what happened I was trying to see how it's working down there. You can't really see, I can't get you at a better angle, but it was kind of, I don't know what was going down down there. I'm trying really hard to understand my machine every time a problem breaks, but it's just so hard because you can't take it apart. You could, but you shouldn't. And so I had to figure it out, but eventually it started working again. And then of course I thread it up, I get it ready to sew again, and it snags again. And I guess it was just because this little, um, my automatic thread cutter was sticking out. So it was catching the thread. But I pushed it back. Hopefully no more issues. <sighs> back to the drawing board. Okay, so it is sewing again. I just re-threaded it, but it's not, it's hard to tell. Um, you can see it more in person, but it's more like pulling as a thread than stitching. So here's my previous stitches. See how it's like stitched in there compared to like this, which is like, a, it's like the thread and then it's like little loops are connecting it to the fabric. You can't tell. It's really hard to tell on camera, but 
it's not as bad here. It was starting to do it really bad over here, and then I restitched it. Um, there, maybe you can kind of see what I'm saying. See how it's coming loose? It shouldn't be doing that. I'm sure it's what you would call like a tension issue, but I haven't touched the tension, so I don't know if maybe it is just the machine. I'll try and adjust the tension a little bit and see if that helps, but still troubleshooting. So I guess I figured it out because my machine did this last stitch better. So I don't know, I'm starting to think it might be the fabric that it's getting all janky with, but I got it to work, so crisis averted. And this is all pinned up, so I'm gonna start hand sewing this. It's gonna take me forever and a year. It's gonna suck to hand sew this zipper stuff in place. I'm not looking forward to it. So I'm just gonna sit. I'm going to hop on my computer, listen to a pod my Potterless podcast, or maybe watch some YouTube videos. I don't know, but I'm gonna finish this up. So it should be done by tomorrow. Actually, I still have the hook and eye that I gotta add as well, but I'm gonna record that spot tomorrow. All right, so I have finally finished the skirt. And I'm gonna try it on and make sure that it fits me because I made a size 16 and I may not be a size 16. And with the shirt uh, in the waist as well, like how it is over here on my mannequin, it might take, um, a little more space with that so i'm gonna try it on let's see what happens hopefully it fits otherwise i'm just gonna have to fit my butt until some like super confining spanx and suck it in <laughs> okay <laughs> it barely fits me and i don't have anything um like i don't have my shirt tucked in i have it pulled up so i'll show you so you can see it's like super tight so maybe some Spanx will help. I don't like this, so we all know we have our problem areas. Mine just don't wanna go away, but it's, I got it zipped up. That's the best part, but it's, I can't see it right now because it's at an angle, but it's kind of cute so far. So I will try this on later with um, the shirt and you know, all the makeup and stuff later, but maybe some nice leggings I can try. Length's not bad. Uh, I don't mind the length. If I wear my boots, maybe they won't be too bad. Um, yeah, if I suck it in real good, it gives me a little looseness, but this is right here is very, very tight. So we'll see, I guess. Um, Oh, but yeah, let's see when it's like bunched up. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. Like I said, I think once I get it all dressed up in, in how I want it, maybe it'll look a little neater and you'll have a better angle of it. But at least it's done. I finally finished my first project in the new house with the new background. So. This is something I really plan to do more often is more of these project vlogs. So I'm just getting started right now, just putting my foot in the water, testing it out, seeing how I wanna do this. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this will be more beneficial so you guys can kind of see my progress as I'm making it. So it doesn't look like I am a perfectionist and I do everything perfectly. and because I edit out a lot of my mistakes and a lot of the things that happen. So this will be great for you guys to kind of jump in with me and see like what's going on behind the scenes in a sense and see that I too am learning myself. You can see what parts I maybe stumble on myself and how I figure them out or how I problem solve them. That may help you problem solve other patterns that I haven't done uh, that you're trying to figure out yourself. So. Hopefully these, like I said, will be beneficial to everyone. And also that way you can also get a little more peek into me and who I am. So I guess that's it for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and start editing this video. So hopefully it'll be up next week. 
and I will be moving on to some new stuff. And now that everything is kind of set up for the most part, I plan to keep going and hopefully there won't be any more long breaks for now. <laughs> I mean, life happens, but it is what it is. But otherwise, if you like this, then go ahead and let me know in the comments and go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you have subscribed, then make sure that you hit the bell so that you get notified when my videos go live. I'm going to once again try every Wednesday um, for the most part. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Bye!